हरि ओम एस्टो थ्री ओम सण सहनावत अड़गुड़ स्तोत्र ओ सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमाशावह ओ शाति 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 गुरस्तोत्र अखंडमंडलाकार व्या चराचर तत्पद दर्शित येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम अज्ञातिरांध से ज्ञाजनशलाकया चक्षुर्मील येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुरव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम स्वर जंगम व्या यचराचर तत्पद दर्शित येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम चिन्मय व्यापीयत्सर्वलोक्यम सचराचर तत्पद दर्शित येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ता पिता बंधु सखा विद्याद्रविणमेव डूइंग आत्मबोध चैंट श्लोक ट्वेंटी वन देहेन्द्रियगुणान्कर्माणीन्द्रियगुणान्कर्माण अमले सच्चिदात्म अमले सच्चिदात्म अध्यस्यंच विवेक अध्यस्यंच विवेक गगने नीलता दिवत गगने नीलता दिवत देहेन्द्रियगुणान्कर्माणी अमले सच्चिदात्म अध्यस्यं च विवेक गगने नीलता दिवत स देह इंद्रियगुणान्कर्माण अमले सच्चिदात्म अध्यस्य फॉर अविवेक गगने नीलता दिवत Here, Shankara Acharya is giving us a glimpse of what adhyasa really means. Adhyasa is an error of superimposition, and as I mentioned last time, that the Brahma Sutra, the Bhashya, he starts with adhyasa Bhashya, where this error of superimposition is exhaustively explained. So, what is this error of superimposition, and? classical example is when i am walking in a, in in a in a semi dark place when i step on a, a a soft thing which is lying on the alley i say it is a snake since i am afraid of the snake i ran away from the from that thinking that it is a snake and for my own security but someone said it's not really a snake but it is a rope 
So question is, is it a snake or a rope? How do we know? We can keep on arguing that it is, I say it is a snake and you will say it is a rope. Only way to resolve the issue is to shed some more light on it and to see the truth as it is. So when we take a torch light and put a light there and we recognize it is indeed a rope and not a snake. So what happened to the snake that I saw? When I saw something, I mistook as it is a snake. The snake actually in my mind. So it came from my mind, projected as though it is there. And when I see the truth as it is, based on the additional information that I have, then I resolve that it is indeed a rope and not a snake. This is the error of superimposition where I am superimposing as though on, on the rope a snake. snake. Snake is not in my mind. Snake is out there and out there is where the rope is. So it is not a rope and a snake. It is only snake. And where exactly is the snake? Where the rope is? So the rope itself appears as a snake and that appearance is due to the fact that I am not or I was not getting complete information about the object. So in this, there are two words as we mentioned, there is a snake. So there is means there is an object that I can recognize because I stepped on it and I know it is around five feet long and it is lying on in the in the alley. So the the, the vision is up to that is clear. The attributes that I am getting from the object are only able to tell me that much information and that information is not sufficient to differentiate whether it is a rope or a snake. It can be a rope, it can be a snake because it's five feet long and it's soft when I, when I uh, stepped on it and in fact it may be one side a heavy side and another side a thin side. All those attributes may belong to the rope or may belong to the, the snake. But I consider based on those attributes only, it is a snake because I'm afraid of this of the snake. And I, because of the security, my own security, I would like to avoid it if it is a snake. And now if you look at the whole process of perception here, two things we need to know. Number one, the perceptual object is recognized or cognized by based on purely attributes. I do not see the object as it is. I only recognize by the senses, based on the senses information, I am getting the attributes of the object. In this case, it is five feet long and it is soft when you press it and it is lying on the, in the, in the, on the way in the alley. So therefore, those are attributes and on the basis of attributes which form an, a vritti, a thought in my mind about the object out there and I say there is an object that I can see but I cannot see clearly enough. So there is and based on the attributes that I am seeing based on the, my sense input, I say it is a snake. So there are two things. There is part is correct because there is a vastu jnanam. Vastu jnanam is a, a knowledge of an object is there, that there is an object there that I am sure of. But what I'm not sure of is exactly what exactly that object is. So there is part is correct. Only part is the conclusion or the inference that the, the, the mind has made that it is a snake based on the attributes it has received from the senses. So this is called adhyasa because it is an error only because after the further examination I found out when I shed a light on it, I found out it is a rope. So there is a snake. Now after the knowledge there is a rope. So if you look at the statements, there is a snake, there is part is still remaining the same in the statement. Only snake part is removed by there is a rope. So half of it is still correct. Even before also half of it is correct. There is part is correct. That means there is an object. 
there exists an object there so existence of an object there is not negated what is negated is what is the 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 nature of that object that whether it is a snake or a rope i thought it is a snake but now i recognize but it is a rope so the problem of adhyasa is there is a superimposition of in the there is part there is an object part attributes of some other object which is not there so adasmin tad buddhi in the sense of sankaracharya says that you are superimposing attributes of some other object on the object that you are seeing there and therefore this conclusion or this error arose in the, in, the, in the mind when i recognize that it is not really a rope so one thing that we need to know is that i need additional information for me to know it is a rope and not a snake so therefore an enquiry is required to find out the truth otherwise i'll be with this knowledge that it is only a snake and how long that will have that knowledge until th- my previous knowledge that it is a snake is negated i'll keep that as real knowledge therefore for me there is a real snake there until i am convinced by having an additional information by enquiry where an enquiry is required in this case i had to put a torch light which reveals the object so i need an appropriate means of enquiry in order to know that it is a rope and not a snake the appropriate means of enquiry is that which gives me more information about the object that is there and that kind of enquiry alone is required it's not that i have to go and sit in one place and do meditation it is a rope it's not snake it is a rope it's not a snake it's not by meditation process it's not by jumping up and down it is not by karma so na karma na na prajaya dhanena tyagena ike i have to give up the notion tyage means i have to give up the notion that it is indeed a snake that it is a rope but i can only give up the notion that it is or i take that it is a notion only only when i have complete information about what it is so a pramana is required a means of knowledge is required to reveal the fact as a fact because otherwise there will be an error in perception and therefore error in knowledge so this perceptual knowledge can be a brahma brahma means a wrong incorrect or illusory knowledge that will be revealed only when i have the right knowledge until the right knowledge takes place that means until further enquiry is done this error of superimposition that adhyasa remains as a prama only for the one who is seeing that means i take it that it is indeed a snake and for me that is a knowledge because i saw a snake and it is a snake and therefore this knowledge will remain with me you until my until my death also because if i no further enquiry if i don't do it the knowledge that it is or it was only a snake will remain with me so here we need a appropriate pramana to discover what really is compared to what we think it is based on what we see so this all this is information is required in terms of adhyasa so this whole universe we are taking as as though based on our information of perceptual data and scripture says that's not really what it is so here the pramana is not it's shedding more light on it but we need a light of knowledge here knowledge pramana through the vedanta that tells you that what you see is not what it is what you see is only superficial or superimposition based on the attributes of the object called rupa and you give a name nama so nama rupa are only based on the attributes but the truth is something other than that how am i going to discover the truth i need appropriate pramana means of knowledge to know what exactly it is in the case of rope and snake i can use a shed i can put a torch light and get additional information about the object 
because when I put the thought slide, I got information or attributes of the object that can differentiate from a rope and a snake and based on those additional attributes, now I know it is indeed a rope and not a snake. So, I need additional attributes or complete attributes of the object to differentiate from what I think it is to what it is. In the same way, I need to have additional information about the world and about myself and all that. So, for this adhyasa, for this superimposed error to remove it because I take myself what I am not is my problem. So, how do you know? How do you know that there is an error? Because the very, uh, very fact that I know I am a conscious entity, I know I am an existent entity, but I take myself, I am this body, I am this, I am a subject and this is an object. And this being an object which I am conscious of or which I am aware of, which is an object of my knowledge. And object of knowledge is different from a subject. So even though the object is different from a subject, I am taking myself, I am the object and that is due to the fact that I do really do not know my true nature. So that is why it's called Adhyasa. And for Adhyasa to operate, to error to operate, I should have some information because Adhyasa was defined as Shankara does, it is Satya Anrutam Ithuni Karanam Adhyasam. Satyam and Anrutam. Satyam means a, a, a right or correct understanding and Anrutam is wrong understanding together or mixed together into one unitary experience and that is what is called Adhyasa. So, in the case of the rope snake, where I am taking the rope or given the rope and I am superimposing on it the attributes of the snake on the attributes of the, of the real rope and then taking together as one as that indeed is only a rope, uh, indeed only a snake. So, there are no rope and a snake there, it is only a snake. And this superimposition of attributes of something other than itself there and then taking that as the real is my error. And even though the snake is in my mind that there is no real snake, the consequence of seeing a snake there where the rope is, is much more because I'm afraid of it and my the heartbeat has gone up, I had to run. So all other secondary process started because of the mistaken notion in my mind that it is indeed a, a snake and rather than a rope. So, essentially, even though Adhyasa is a notion in the mind because of the lack of clear understanding, the consequence of that Ajnanam manifests through in terms of at the mental level and the physical level, the fear, anxiety, my breathing has gone and if I am heart patient and my heart will be really pulsating and so on and so forth. All other secondary effects which are Tangible effects can come from this error of superimposition. So, this is called Adhyasa. <coughs> so, I mentioned there are two kinds of Adhyasa and in this case, it is called a subjective error. Subjective error means where I am superimposing a snake on the rope because I don't see completely. So, it is my error because other person getting the same information said it is a rope and not a snake. So, this error is at an individual level where I am projecting, my mind is projecting, an individual mind is projecting a snake where there is a rope. That's called subjective projection of the objective world. That's why we can imagine all sorts of things when we see something, those are all subjective projections. And there are objective errors also and that is simple example is here he is giving Gagani Nilata Devatu in the Gagan in the in the Gaganam. Gaganam means in this in this Akasha or space we are seeing Nilam. Nilakam Nila means the blue color. So when I look outside, it says what is the color of the sky? It says it's blue. So how do you say? Because I can see. So here is an adhyasa, an error, because the real is space doesn't have a color. 
but I am seeing it because not only I am seeing, everybody else is seeing though. So this error of superimposition is not a subjective error, it is an objective error because of the refraction of the light through the dust particles and so on. Therefore, it is appearing to me the, uh, the blue color, but the real nature is if you see in the dark where there is no refraction of the light there and you see it is in fact a clear. So therefore, the superimposition is not subjective objectively introduced, the error is not due to my own subjectivity and therefore even though when I understood that the space is in indeed colorless, but even when I am looking at I can still see that there is, a, there is a blue color. In the case of a rope snake, once I understood that it is indeed a snake and when I look at it, I have no more notion that it is a rope, I won't, it is a snake. I won't see snake anymore because I see the fact it is only a rope. So the error, once I removed, that error is gone permanently and therefore it is sub, because it is a subjective error and subjective error will be completely eliminated when I understand the truth as a truth. Whereas the objective error, because it's not created by my mind, it is created by the global mind, that objective error still remains, appearance of the, 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 uh, the, the space into the blue color will still remain even though I understood that it is not indeed blue. So therefore, this objective errors will remain even knowing or even having the knowledge that its sky is colorless. This has an implication in terms of jnanam also. All that is packed in this sloka. In essence, a jnani, once he understood that I am Atma and the whole universe is, the substratum is myself, so that removes the ignorance of taking myself, I am only this body, I am this. Says that is what the ego is. I am this body, I am this mind, I am this intellect. So identification, the utpadis, I am this, this, this is my error and the problems of the body, mind and intellect they is, are taken as my problems and therefore I suffer the consequence of that identification. And whereas my truth is, I am conscious entity and I cannot be unconscious entity. Unconscious entity is only a superimposition and therefore when I understood the truth that I am indeed Satchidananda Swarupam, then what happens to the world? What happens to the vision of the world? And this is where you can see just as once I understood that the, the sky is colorless, Still, when I look at through the sky, through in the in the daytime, color the sky will be looking at looking for me as a blue. Therefore, implication is a jnani once you under once he understand that I am Satchidananda Swarupa, while still looking through the body, mind, and intellect and the sense organs and the mind, the world outside through those equipments, he will still see the world as different objects, but now he understood in and through the names and forms that he sees, it is nothing but pure existence that is all pervading all over. And that existence is revealed by his consciousness. Therefore, it is consciousness and the existence together is what is the whole universe itself. He has understood and now in spite of the vision of the plurality, he does not give the reality to the plurality that he sees. Therefore, a jnani, what does he do? He jnani does see the whole universe, but he has no mistaken notion that it is separate from him. So this has to be understood in the example here, Gagane Nilata Devatu, just as the sky example where the Adhyasa is not a subject to superimposition of the object on the objective world, but it is objective superimposition and just like the sunrise and sunset or the pencil bending, if you have 
put the pencil in the water half half pencil outside and half in water you think it's bent all that are our objective errors because that you it is not based on you it is based on the global mind so global mind remains the same individual mind recognizes the error so the knowledge takes place at the individual mind level that is where the avijja is at the global level we call it as a moya so therefore the even though i have understood a gnani has understood that there is only satchidananda he can still perceive the world of plurality but he does not take it as a reality this has to be understood but what does he get eliminated what the eliminated is elim things that get eliminated are subject to errors subject means like as like the the snake that i have seen it gets eliminated once i have the knowledge it is a robe so therefore subject to misunderstanding that come because of taking the word so i am a samsari i am this all those notions that i have due to this error of taking the world as real all that will get eliminated only the objective errors remain that means a gnani will be operating in the objective world as an objective in objectively therefore every action will be with complete detachment itself so all the attachments come from the subjective errors so here deha indriya gunan karmani amale sachidatmani adhyasyanti due to avivekena because of i am not able to discriminate properly what is real and what is unreal because it is amalam amalam means it is pure means there is nothing other than sachidanandam but i am taking there are so many things and varieties of names and forms like deha indriya gunan karmani etc also that means they have means a body indriyas this tens sense organs and organs of action karmani all the gunan the properties the sattva rajas tamo guna and their derivatives and karmani the actions as a result of it all are i am superimposing on satchit atmani amale that which is infinite existent consciousness on that i am superimposing on it and that's called adhyasa just as i am superimposing blue color on this sky this adhyasa part Shankara is going to take more because this is the essence of the knowledge in war. That's why he, as I said, he wrote the Adhyasa Bhashya as a starting point for Brahma Sutra, Brahma Sutra Bhashya. So, the same aspect is discussed in the in the sloka second twenty second. Agnyanan manasopade. अज्ञानसोपे कर्तृत्वादी चात्म कर्तृत्वादी चात्म कल्य कल्युगते चंद्रे कल कल्युगते चंद्रे चलनाथस चलनाथस टगदर अज्ञानसोपे कर्तृत्वादी चात्म कल्युगते चंद्रे चलनाथस सो हियर हि गिव अनदर एक्सापल आफ दिस अध्यास एरर ऑफ सूपर इंपोजिशन सो अज्ञानसोपे कर्तृत्वादी चात्म सो बिकॉज ऑफ Not, not having the clear understanding, agnana, manasopade hi kartrutvadin kartrutvad kartrutvadini atmani kalpyante ambugati chandre chalanadi yatham basaha. So that when I say I am a doer, kartrutvam is kartrutvam and bhoktrutvam, both are included here. Says I am a doer, I am an enjoyer. 
So the whole life is based on this because once I say kartrutva bhavam is there, I am a doer, therefore the results belong to me, therefore the karma belongs to me and karma has two results. One is the immediate tangible result, another is intangible impression that leaves in the mind as I like it or I don't like it and this becomes a vasana and repeated actions of that will will strengthen the vasanas and that becomes a motivating factor as the karma that because of which I am born. The total karma is Sanchita karma and of which I brought into this world is, is the praradha karma and in the process when I do willful actions, willful selfish actions if I do then I accumulate new karma and that could either be exhausted in this life or if the body, mind, intellect and the on this life is not conducive then I had to put it in bank in, the, in my bank account as sanchita karma. So the whole basis of this this uh, the birth and the death and the birth and the death cycle is because of the notion that I am a doer kartrutva bhavam and therefore there has to be if I have once the kartrutva bhavam there is also bhoktrutvam enjoyment of the results of the action that I have done I am responsible for it therefore I have to suffer the consequence of it suffer or enjoy the consequence of the actions that I think I have done. Therefore, this I have done. Who has done? The one who is claiming this and the one who is claiming is a Chaitanya Swarupam, is a conscious entity. So, that conscious entity in fact cannot do anything. So, therefore, the pure consciousness cannot be, cannot be enacting because pure consciousness is infinite and it is Satchidananda Swarupam and that which is infinite cannot be performing an action because action can only be done by finite things. Therefore, the actions at the body, mind and intellect level which are finite, which are part of the Prakriti, body, mind, intellect are part of the Prakriti and actions done by those equipments in the presence of consciousness is superimposed on as I am a doer. Who is claiming? The one who says I am and that is a, a Jivatma is claiming that I am the doer because that works being done by Deha, Indriya, Manas, Buddhi etc. So what is this problem? Because I do not know myself who I am. Therefore I take myself what I am not as I am. I take myself I am the body, mind and intellect and the body, mind and intellect are activated in the presence of consciousness and performs the duties based on its uh, the, the, uh, the vasanas and therefore the activities of the body, mind, intellect I take as my activity that is due to ajnanat, due to the lack of clear understanding about my true nature. And here he gives another example. Kalpyanti ambugati chandri chalanadi yathambasaha. So yatha ambasaha so in the water, this is Ambugati Chandri, the reflected moon is shaking because there is a water in the, in the, in a, so let's imagine a full moon night and you have put water outside in a vessel or in a bucket and the, when the bucket is still, there is a reflection of the moon in the, in, in the water. And if I disturb the, the water, the image also gets disturbed and looking at this, looking at this, looking at that disturbed image of the moon, I say the moon is getting disturbed. But it is nothing to do with the moon. Moon is all shining up in the sky but it's only the image is getting disturbed and therefore but I am superimposing the disturbance of the image in the water to the disturbance of the moon itself and that's because I do not know that the truth it is only an image and the real one is not disturbed at all.
So here he is giving an example for us what's the what is the relation between a jiva and paramatma. So that which is satchidanandam which is infinite. So therefore it is not localized. It is not at any particular place or particular time. It is beyond the time and beyond the space. And but at the same time, wherever there is this subtle body is there, this all-pervading light of consciousness get reflected in the subtle body depending upon the quality of the subtle body. So quality of the body, it's like a mirror and depending upon how clean the mirror is, the, the sunlight can get reflected by the mirror. So it's nothing to do with the sun. Sun is all shining. And if you ask the sun, why are you getting reflected? He says, I have nothing to do with it. I am just self-shining, self-existing entity. And the same way, Atma has nothing to do with this process. Atma, from the point, from the Brahman point, it is infinite. It is of the existent nature and it is pure consciousness and there is no external things on that because that's why it is Brahman. But on the other hand, wherever there is a presence of this subtle bodies, wherever there is a mind intellect is present, antakkaranam, it gets reflected. The consciousness gets reflected and not only it gets reflected, it makes the mind active as though it is a conscious entity. Just as the sunlight is shining all over and in the night when there is a moon and the moon Although it is not a luminous body by itself, becomes a luminous body when the sunlight falls on the moon. And that moonlight can get reflected back onto the earth. So when we look at the sky in the night and say there is a bright moon there, the brightness does not belong to the moon. It is coming from the from the sunlight. So for Agnyanan, so for the one who, who does not know the real, we say the moon is shining. Moon is not self-shining. Moon is shining because of the sun. If there is no sun, there cannot be, uh, we cannot see the moon also because only it is a reflected light that we see from the moon and say it is the moon is shining. Therefore, we can say moon is shining in the same way he is acting or I am acting when you make a statement that I am the doer it is not the Atma that is doing it is superimposed as though Atma is doing but only in its presence the body mind and intellect have become active and that is the one that is moving around and doing all the actions but all pervading consciousness cannot move anywhere because it is all pervading and eternal and infinite. Therefore, it is kalpan, kalpyante. It is only an imagination or a projection for a seer who is seeing this and think that it is the Atma is doing here, I am doing, he is doing and so on. When you make a statement, we are already making a statement that it is the reflected consciousness that is moving around but not the original consciousness and original consciousness is unperturbed by these disturbances. So in the same way a jiva, an individual has to recognize that all the activities are belong to the prakriti only. Pure consciousness is only enlivening the body, mind and intellect the mind and intellect particularly the subtle body and because why because the equipments the the mind and intellect have capability to reflect that consciousness and become as though conscious and perform the actions and this has to be understood and in the same way just as when the the water gets disturbed we say the moon is disturbed although it is only reflected moon and the original main moon is not perturbed at all by this by the disturbance of the water So the question now is how do I recognize who I am 
using this equipment that are getting disturbed because pure consciousness all pervading satchidananda atma is all the time all pervading satchidananda atma it doesn't need to recognize anything because there is nothing to recognize so from the pure atman point there is no creation even and therefore there is neither jnanam or ajnanam so from brahman no point no question of realization now from the brahman is pure brahman realization the jnanam and ajnani are at the level of transaction level where we think that creation is there and therefore we are asking this question so jiva who thinks is where did i come from who am i who is the world what is this world what's my relationship with the world and who is the creator of all this so these questions are raised at the individual level from the total level from the point of brahman there is no world there is no ignorance nor a knowledge also it is pure satchidananda swarupam now once i am in the jiva it is the jiva is asking the question how do i recognize that i am pure consciousness you have given all the theories okay but now i am already in this situation and i am taking myself i am this body mind and intellect that seems to be my life in fact that seems to be biography of everybody everybody takes the i am the body i am the mind and intellect and operating all through i have to do this i have to do that i want to enjoy this i want to enjoy that all that is because of identification with the body mind and intellect so how should i disregard this i am taking it is already a snake so first i need to understand it is not a snake it is a rope there for that i need to do proper enquiry in the case of a rope snake example i have to put a torch light and to see what whether it is a rope or a snake in the case of in the case of this knowledge that who am i it's not an objective knowledge it is a subjective knowledge so therefore i cannot say i am this by any other means no pramana can operate because pramana is a means of knowledge and pramana can only operate at the level of transactional world so then how do i say vedanta is a pramana vedanta is a pramana because it tells you something other than what it is which cannot be gained by any pratyaksha mana and other means of knowledge and it is a pramana of indicating something which cannot be indicated because the truth is i am is aprameyam aprameyam is it is not it cannot be an object of knowledge itself so how is it operating as a knowledge or a means of knowledge vedanta when you say it is a pramana it's a means of knowledge so how is it as a means of knowledge is operating it is operating only as a lakshana vakyam an indicatory definition where one has to prepare the mind to the mind who has prepared it shows the indication that it is in that direction you have to enquire tad vignasa swa you have to enquire into the nature of that what is that using these stepping stones so it provides a guidelines to enquire into that which can be discovered and for that which is which is beyond any means of knowledge so it has to be understood correctly this we'll explain more as we go along and here we take this shloka 23rd rage icha sukha dukhaadi rage icha sukha dukhaadi buddhau satyam pravartate buddhau satyam pravartate susuptau nasti tannashe सुषुप्तौ नास्ति तन्नासे तस्मात् बुद्धिस्तु नात्मनः तस्मात् बुद्धिस्तु नात्मनः टुगेदर रागेच्छा सुख दुःखादि बुद्धौ सत्यं प्रवर्तते सुषुप्तौ नास्ति तन्नासे तस्मात् बुद्धिस्तु नात्मनः so here is using what do you call anvaya vyatireka logic to differentiate and to determine who am i and what i am not to discarding what i am not 
So here, before we go into this sloka, we need to give some example of what is Anvaya Vyatireka. Anvaya, when there are two things, see x and y, when there are two things together all the time, and we want to know which is, are they equal? Or the one is dependent and another independent and if these two what is independent and what is dependent we need to understand those two in order to find out what is what kind of relationship they have <coughs> and that for that what we use is called anvaya and vetireka anvaya is where if we have a situation where first we need to recognize those things are occurring all the time. These two are together all the time and when say whenever this is there, that is there, whenever that is there, this is there. So therefore they are always interrelated somehow because wherever they are going together. And now I had also find an occasion where when one is not there, other is still there. So I need to have a Vyatireka where one is not, other is also not, then they are always together and therefore there is no relationship, they are always two as one only. But if I can find a situation where I have one is there but other is not there and other is there and one is not there. So I can see whether both are independent of each other and they are somehow together in many places, but there are occasions where one is, other is not, or other is, the one is not. So I need to find out a situation where I can differentiate these two and see which one is has an independent existence and other one has a dependent existence. This is called Anvaya Vitirek. So let's take a simple example. I have a gold and a ring. Now, we are taking this as a different example, like I have here in the case, for example, I have a watch and I have a desk here and I, they are always together right now, but I can separate, I can have a desk separately without a watch, I can have a watch separately without a desk, therefore they are two together, but they are also two independently or situations where they can be independent of each other, where each one is can be independently existing. So that is called just in this case, in this case is just some yoga sambandha. Some yoga sambandha means only contact relationship. Whereas in the case of, let's take a more subtler example, in the case of a golden ring, this golden ring is only one unit, but there is a gold and there is a ring. There are two nouns. Ring and a gold. And a ring and a gold are not synonyms because if you go into the dictionary and ask, is it a ring is same as gold? No. So ring is a noun and gold is a noun. There are two independent nouns, but here when I say it is a ring, the other fellow says, no, it's a gold. So is it a ring or is it a gold? What is the relation between the ring and the gold? So there two seems to be two nouns mixed together into one noun and this is because one noun means the sense one object only and therefore how do I separate these when they are all the time together? So I need to have an occasion where I can separate the ring from the gold and see which is has a dependent existence and which has an independent existence if I can separate. So I have a ring and the gold. Now I can have a situation where if I melt the ring, there is no more ring but gold is. So initially gold is and the ring is. Together they are there as one. But I can, I can create a situation where the gold is still there but ring is not. So therefore ring existence of a ring depends upon the goal. Now we look at the other way. I Can I have ring without a goal? Ring is, gold is, but ring is not, gold is still there. So I cannot have a situation where I can remove the gold from the ring and still have a ring. That is not possible. Whereas I could remove the ring form and still have the gold. So this kind of 
the discriminative process is required and that's called anvaya vyatireka when they are together they are anvaya both are there ring is there gold is there in the vyatireka it fails in the sense that even though the gold is there ring is not and this has to be applied in order to differentiate where am i and what is this world and what am i the body i am the mind i am the intellect i say i had to find a situation where i am still there but i am not conscious of the body or i am not conscious of the mind or i am not conscious of the intellect and therefore intellect body mind intellect or manasu buddhi or deham depends on me but i don't depend on them and those are the situations that i need to find and this is what is essentially inquired in the avastatrayam or the panchakosha viveka and this anvaya vyatireka logic is used to discover i am an independent entity and these body mind and intellect they are dependent entities and i lend the existence and support for them but i can always withdraw because i am independent of them i can exist without them but they cannot exist without me and that has to be understood therefore their existence is a dependent existence whereas i am independent and i can don't have anything to do with them also so here he is giving an example of this raga ichcha sukha dukha adi buddho satyam pravartate so this raga raga means the raga dveshas the attachments and all that ichcha the desires when i have a raga i can have desires and at the intellect level and it comes down to agitations of the mind level and the actions of the body level so raga raga deshas are essentially expressions of the vasanas and ichcha is manifestation of the vasanas into the desires at the intellect level and therefore i go after sukham dukham and so on where i am comfortable pleasurable or not happy unhappy and so on depending upon whether they are satisfied they are the environment or the objects are or in tune with my likes or not in tune with my likes or raga dveshas therefore shankara says raga ichcha sukha dukha adi sukham dukham adi sukham dukham means all these the dvandvas dvandva means pairs of opposite sitosh nasuka dukkheshu so sitam ushnam sukham dukham anam the avamanam arapamanam all the are all our dualities of the moods of either the body level or the mind level or the intellect level and therefore it says here buddha satyam it says essentially our being experience or perceived at the buddhi level as i am the one who is suffering i am the one who is cold i am the one who is having like i don't like it i love i hate it all our whole life itself is based on raga dveshas and we keep fluctuating all the time looking for environments that are are conducive to our likes and avoiding environments for that are not conducive or that are that which you don't we don't like it so whole life itself is propelled by this raga dveshas and looking for sukham and avoiding dukham and this is whole our life therefore at to whom this belong to question is am i suffering because everybody say i am suffering and the samsari is one who 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 suffers with this and the question is where does it belong to it says buddha satyam pravartate it is only at the buddhi level it belongs to the buddhi not to me i am and how do we know that it says sushupto nasti tannase tasmat buddhistu natmanah so i the whenever the buddhi or the mind is there i am having this so i have two things here the buddhi and <coughs> and the raga dveshas 
and I am also there. I am a conscious entity identifying with the buddhi and says I am having this problem. I am having a raga dveshas. I have likes and dislikes and ichas and dveshas and I am happy and unhappy. Sukha dukkha. I am cold. I am hot. All these are the body level. Therefore all these changes of these opposites, experience of opposites is I say I am having it. But it belong it does not belong to me it belongs to the buddhi because it says sushupta nasti so when i go to a deep sleep state what happens what is a deep sleep state in the waking state i have buddhi manas and deha indriya everything and when i go to dream state i withdraw myself from the gross body stula sariram and but it the 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 subtle body still remains where it is projecting the suppressions and vasanas of suppressions and oppressions of the waking world i am projecting which cannot be exhausted in the waking world that which i am trying to exhaust in the in the dream state so it is a cleaning process and there also I have Raga Dveshas and I have Sukham Dukham environment that are conducive to for my happiness, not happiness and so on and those are the dream experiences and when I go to deep sleep state even the subtle body folds both the mind and intellect is are folded in a dormant state therefore but I am still there so I am there, they are not there. I am there, they are there. So I have a situation, I am there in the waking state and they are there. I am there in the dream state and they are there. But when I go to deep sleep state, Sushuptao, I am there, but they are not there. So therefore, I have a situation where there are two, two are there, but situation where the Yatriyaka applies, I am only there, but they are not there. So therefore, all these emotions, Raga, Icha, Sukha, Dukkha, everything, it belongs to Buddhi level only. Buddhi means Buddhi, mind, also Manas and Deham. Therefore, they, are, they are, do not belong to me. I am pure Satchidananda Swarupam and I have no Sukham, Dukkham, Manam, Apamanam, Sitam, Vishnam. That's why people take even uh, sleeping pills to go to that state because they belong to the body or the mind or the intellect level. So I have all the pains in the body, I take sleeping pill, so that I go to a, a deep sleep state where I am not identifying with the body and these pains belong to only to the body level, therefore I can be there without these problems. And if I can understand this veil, body, mind and intellect are operating, I am free from all these, even though body, mind and intellect have Sukha, Dukkha, Raga, Dvesha and all that. And that is what is is called a jnani. In the case of deep sleep state, I have no knowledge that I am free from all this because for the knowledge to take place, I need the buddhi. But the buddhi itself, whenever buddhi comes, all this garbage also comes with me in the sense of raga, dveshas and sukha and dukkha and all that. Therefore, I need to have an understanding now that it doesn't belong to me, it belongs to only to the buddhi. Therefore, if a, a jnani is the one who understood that I am not the body, mind, not the mind and not the intellect, the properties of the body, mind, and intellect belong to only to the body, mind, and intellect, but I am free. I am unnecessarily taking the body, mind, and intellect as I am, and therefore the suffering the consequence of the identification with that. And therefore, here I had to use the Anvaya Vyatireka, who I am is I am not this, I am not this, neti neti, starting from I am not the body. Because the body is inert. I am a conscious entity. I am not the mind. My mind, in, mind is also inert. I am a conscious entity and not the intellect also. Even the intellect is inert and I am the one. I lend support for them 
and I make them enliven, but I can also withdraw myself from me. And that's exactly is the sushupti. But only problem is I have no buddhi to know. So knowledge cannot take place. I need buddhi to know, to know. At the same time, when the buddhi is there, all other problems are coming. Therefore, I have to avoid those problems or sublimate those problems with a clear understanding in the buddhi that they are only, do not belong to me at all. It's pure consciousness that I am using the buddhi as equipment. This is the clear understanding of self-realization. So all these slokas are very extremely meditative slokas, one has to use it to understand who is that I am and what is this world and what is this body by an intellect and at what level of identification I am having these problems. And this is called Anvai Vyatireka logic. So we will take the next sloka. So with this I think it's almost time. We'll do the Purnamada Purnamidam and we'll take sloka 24 when you come back next week. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Masishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om